Our uh, upcoming events for the week are listed on the screen. Wednesday, Wednesday, May 1st, will be welcome to table. If you'd like to help, we can always use help. Or just come and share a meal with us. It's a great time to get together with other people and share a meal. Next Saturday at 8 o'clock, we'll be having our monthly cleaning day. Come join the fun. And it says, yes, we do have fun. Um, and we do. We do have fun. Next, also next Saturday, um, the soccer group will begin planning for a pride picnic for the summer. Um, if you have questions, see Tommy. That will be held uh, again at noon at Caribou in the Cash Wise building. And of course, don't forget to sign up for uh, clipboards to help with worship uh, duties or with welcome table. Our offering plates are in the back of the church. If you would like to help support the journey and our missions, place your donations in the plates as you leave today. Now take a deep breath and listen to our bells as the church service begins. <laughs> Would you pray with me, please? 
please. Gardening God, cultivating us a spirit of openness in this time of worship. Help us to till the soil of our hearts, to dig deep into your scriptures, to nourish our bodies and spirits with song and praise. Help us to love one another more fully and to bear spiritual fruit, for you are the vine, and we are the branches, and in you will live, grow, and have the fullness of life. Amen. Would you stand as you are willing and able, and let's sing together.
1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21 from the Inclusive Bible. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten of God and has knowledge of God. Those who do not love have known nothing of God, for God is love. God's love was revealed in our midst in this way, by sending the only begotten into the world, that we might have faith through the anointed one. Love them then consists of this, not that we have loved God, but that God has loved us, and has sent the only begotten to be an offering for our sins. Beloved, if God has loved us so, we must have the same love for one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God dwells in us. And God's love, <coughs> excuse me, is brought to perfection in us. The way we know that we remain in God and God in us is that we have been given the Spirit. We have seen for ourselves and can testify that God has sent the only begotten and the Savior of the world. When any acknowledge that Jesus is the only begotten, God dwells in them, and they in God. They have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God in them. Love will come to perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear, because our relation to this world is just like Christ. There is no fear in love, for perfect love drives out fear. To fear is to expect punishment, and anyone who is afraid and still imperfect in love. We love because God first loved us. If you say you love God, but hate your sisters or brothers, you are a liar. For you cannot love God, who if you, if you have not seen, if you hate your neighbor, whom you have seen. If we love God, we should love our sisters and brothers as well. We have this commandment from God. Please join together in our prayer of brokenness. Awesome God, we confess that we have allowed fear to rule our lives. We have allowed fear to keep us from loving our neighbors who are different from us. We have allowed fear to close our doors, our hearts, our minds. But you are perfect love and cast out all fear. Help us to let go of what holds us back and to be open to your spirit, to love freely and to love deeply. We know that our hearts may be broken, but help us anyway to love those most in need, the most vulnerable, and guide us into ways of love and care that help heal our brokenness. In the name of Christ, the one who laid down his life for us because he loved us so much. We pray in all things. Amen. Coming together with grateful hearts, remembering all that Christ has done for us, and knowing we can never repay that kind of love except in how we love one another. Share God's love. Share God's peace, share God's joy. Then know and experience that same love, peace, and joy in your own heart. We are forgiven, we are loved, we are restored. Amen. Our second reading is from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, and this is from the message. I am the real vine, and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes, and every branch that is grape-bearing he prunes back, so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me, make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, you are the branches. 
when you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead boy, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me, and my words are at home with you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my Father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples, I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my Father's commands and made myself at home in his love. So, there are things that are going on in the world these days that make me kind of on edge, right? My, uh, my little heart wraps itself in knots and I want to be really, really angry at people. And so I'm going to, you know, this is, this is what happened to me as I read these passages this week and see if... Um, See if you can relate. I started reading 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. And I read all of this passage about God being love, and love is the answer. And if we can't love our neighbors, then how can we love God? And I'm reminding myself it's all going to be okay. God has got this, and the only way to spread more love in the world is to spread more love in the world. We cannot anger and hate ourselves out of love. And then I get to that line that says, when any acknowledge that Jesus is the only begotten, God dwells in them and they in God. And I'm like, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe it is only Christians. That's the message that's been stuck in my head for forever and ever and ever. And so my body wants to grab on to that one sentence out of a long, long scripture passage. My being, my selfishness, my fear wants to grab on to that one sentence so that I have permission to love with conditions. To say that's fine, we're in, but they're not. To say, you gotta, you gotta say Jesus is the only begotten Son, otherwise you don't deserve my love. How, how do we 
ne negotiate all of that if we believe love is love is love and we should love everyone. So as much as we want to try and believe it's just easy, sometimes the reality of our lives says it's not so clear cut as we think. But I still believe, I still believe that love has to come first. And love maybe doesn't always look the same as we think it looks, but love always has to come first. And so I go back to that reading from John. Because I have to say, this is one of my favorite images in the Bible. I am the real vine. My father is the farmer. And you are the branches. So we put that in the context. Life throws stuff at us, and sometimes we don't feel like we're part of the vine anymore. Sometimes we don't feel like we're part of the crowd. Sometimes we cannot feel God's love for us because we've been battered and bruised, because we've been taught to fear, because we've been taught to hate. But when a branch is getting sickly on your vine, you can choose to prune it immediately, or you can choose to give it a little extra love and a little extra love care. And quite often that branch will come back to health and become again a contributing part of the whole, bearing fruit. And if not, it's not the vine's job. It's not the branch's job to do the pruning. It's up to God to know when it's time to let go, when it's time to shed that which is not helping anymore. It is not our job to exclude. If we are to be a part of the vine that is Jesus Christ, then it is our calling to love as Jesus loved. I love this part from 1 John. Love will come to perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear because our relation to this world is just like Christ. Because our relation to this world is just like Christ's. And that's why for me personally, I cannot speak for any of the rest of you, knowing Jesus from the Gospels is so much more important than being immersed in the whole of the Bible as if Jesus wrote it. Because I need to learn to love the way Jesus loved. I need to learn to walk through the world the way Jesus walked through the world. And time and time and time and time and time again, I see him choosing love, choosing to heal. I don't see him asking whether they were Sadducees or Pharisees. I just see Jesus healing and loving and welcoming and accepting so that is my goal if I am to be a part of this vine that is Jesus. Love will come to perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear because our relation to this world is just like Christ's. There is no fear in love. For perfect love drives out fear. To fear is to expect punishment. And anyone who is afraid is still imperfect in love. God is love. And if you're struggling to feel that, I pray that there is something.
someone who comes into your life and will remind you how much God loves you in this very moment because out of that love, we can then love in return. And so, what are your thoughts? Anyone else willing to fess up to struggling with this? Um, as of lately, I've been trained to live my life on a simple philosophy of love everyone and judge no one. It's not easy. I saw it was a problem a while back when I was judging people by what was in their shopping cart at the grocery store. And uh, now I look in my own cart and it's not full of health food. So I gotta, I gotta you know, watch how I, you know, watch my judgmental decisions because it's not easy to be unjudgmental, but I should try harder. I, I always find uh, loving as a difficult thing to operate, to put into operation, because you can, in your own mind, you can kind of conceptualize this and what you want and so forth. But how do you put it into operation? And it, it, it becomes just kind of a kind of a self assessment continuously of what am I making judgments about and what's that based on? And it's like you use the example of say the person who's released from a sex uh, treatment program is that if you uh, just uh, react to that person based upon that information, you can't go anywhere. You have to somehow connect with the person in a way that they understand that you are interested in them and you care about them. So it's just that kind of operation that you put your love into action. And it's, it's pretty easy to do by giving $25 to the Indian mission, but it's much more difficult to go down and visit with someone who doesn't uh, seem to have a home. So those are just kind of some of the things that go through my mind. Um, you know, when you said uh, fear is to accept punishment, I thought, you know, that, that is really a very true thought. Um, it just hit me.
breath.
has been with us in this place. And the spirit of the risen Christ will go with each and every one of you as you leave. So please carry that spirit with you. Share that spirit generously that all will know the love of God. Go and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.